My name is Alan Hart and in today's video we're going to look at F-Gas and F-Gas training. So I'm over at Viva Training and we've got Robin here. And Robin, he's been an F-Gas trainer or a refrigerant trainer now or working with refrigerants for about 50 years. So he's really experienced in it. So without further ado, let's go over to Robin. Basic refrigeration system here at a training centre and we're going to fit some gauges to it so that we can analyse it. First thing we do is remove the valve cap. In my right hand here is the high pressure side, left hand is the low pressure side. Gauge manifold set made by Testo, it's a 550i this one. Basic manifold set but there's no readings on it so I have to use an app on my phone. Red hose on the right hand side against this red knob goes on the high pressure side. Low pressure side goes on this one and that's the blue hose. How do I know which goes on which side? High pressure side, low pressure side. High pressure side, the pipe work is smaller. This is leaving the receiver down the liquid line through a dryer, a sight glass, a solenoid valve, all the way up to the evaporator through the metering device and returns back after the evaporator down the suction line into the low pressure side and the compressor, which then compressor goes back into the, to the condenser and the receiver. The low pressure side always has the larger pipes and the high pressure side has smaller pipes. You get told the exact reasons for that on the training course. We'll go into the Testo app and the probes are paired already. There's no pressure showing yet because there's no pressure in these lines. What these lines contain is air and I need to get rid of that so that it don't go into the system. I need to make sure that there is nowhere where refrigerant can escape to atmosphere because the main course of all this is the F-gas course. And the reason for the F-gas course is fluorinated refrigerants and the control of damage to the environment. That's the important part of this course. I can open the high pressure side first, which has now come down this line and is passed through here. And I can purge a tiny little bit out to blow it to atmosphere. And there's no air in these lines now, so I can't damage my system. And there's now pressures reading on the app. Okay, we're running pressures on both sides of the system. The low side is reading 5.17 bar and the high side is reading 11.7, 11.8 bar. So, we have the system working. Compressors compressing it. Condensers condensing the refrigerant where it turns into a liquid. Down the liquid line, through the metering device, through the evaporator and back to the compressor all running nicely. Now we'll fit the probe so we can read the temperature of the lines and compare that to the pressure temperature relationship. One on the suction line and one on the condensate return out of the condenser. So we've now got pressure, evaporating temperature, the actual physical temperature of the pipe and then the degree of superheat and subcooling. Probes are all fitted, we've got a nice set of readings from the system so we can move, now move on to the next step of an F-gas course which would be imagining there is something wrong with the system and we need to remove the refrigerant. We're now going to break into the system. That means removing all the refrigerant. We call it refrigerant recovery. It's as though there's something wrong and a component's got to be removed. So what we do is connect up a recovery unit and a cylinder. A gauge manifold is connected as it was before. So we now have this unit down here that we turn on and it sucks basically, very similar to another fridge system and takes all the refrigerant out. What we're looking for is to get the system down on a slightly negative pressure so that when we remove the lines and we remove any components, no refrigerant will be released to atmosphere. Remember, the whole point of the F-gas course is to protect the environment from the release of refrigerants. So, now we've done a uh, 
removed all the refrigerant. Remember, we removed the refrigerant because we were assuming something had to be repaired. So we can now, again, assume that we've done the repair and we now need to pressure test the system. So to pressure test this system, we use nitrogen, which is just out of camera shot here, but I can connect the equipment up. We have to decide with the nitrogen what pressure we're going to pressure test it to. And the pressure test is achieved, the pressure is, should I say, decided upon by taking the refrigerant type and seeing what it, pressure it would exert on the system at 55 degrees C. And I've found out with this, because our refrigerant is R448, it will be 23 bar or just over. So I shall pressure test this to 23, 24 bar and make sure there's no leaks. And a pressure test has to be put in, achieved and then held for a minimum of one hour. So we'll do that next. I've connected up a full pressure test rig. I've got a correct regulator over there and I've got a special hose here that has got a steel safety cable attached to it. That's really important. The safety aspect of high pressures cannot be overstated. There, I've blown the system up to 25 bar. We'll now wait one hour and see if it falls. So, we've done our pressure test. It's been sat here for over an hour and there has been no pressure drop whatsoever. Therefore, I know that this system has passed. There are no leaks. I can now blow off the nitrogen to atmosphere. This stuff is passive to the atmosphere, so it's perfectly safe and legal to blow it off. The only thing you have to watch is that when you're blowing the nitrogen out, it makes a horrible whistling noise and can hurt your ears. So maintain safety again for noise and cover your eyes. Make sure that you've got something safe over your eyes in case particles get blown about. So, as you can hear, the nitrogen's now left the system. The thing is, though, there is still nitrogen within the whole system, in the tubes, in the compressor, in the evaporator, the condenser, everywhere. We now have to draw a vacuum on it to remove all the nitrogen and ensure that any moisture is removed from the system as well. That will be our next phase. We're now ready to evacuate the system, to remove all the nitrogen, non-condensables, moisture, the whole lot's got to go. The worst enemy of a fridge system is air and moisture, so let's make sure we remove all of that. So we've got a vacuum gauge connected up here, which is reading on the Testo app. We've got a vacuum pump ready to go. Valves are open on the gauge manifold. Valves are open to the system. And then turn the back pump on, so we'll just wait. We're starting to get a negative pressure read in here on the low and high pressure. The tor gauge will begin to read once the system gets below 20 tor. So it's a wait and see job. So the system's now below 2 tor, so we need to isolate it turn off the vacuum pump and then watch it for up to an hour to see if we get a rise in pressure. Close the valves on the manifold first, then turn off the vacuum pump and we'll now stand and watch it for a while. We've been waiting over an hour. The vacuum's held at 1.2 tor, which is really, really nice. There's no leaks, there's no moisture in the system, so we're ready for charging. So, charging the system. We've got everything connected up, apps running, scales are on, uh, refrigerant cylinders connected. We're all ready to introduce refrigerant into the system. What I'm going to do is take liquid refrigerant and feed it into the high side of the system. This will be the fastest and most efficient way of doing it. Open the cylinder and start chucking it into the high side. It's feeding straight in here. I can see this pressure going up here, or rather the pressure, the weight's going up from my cylinder. We've got 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1 kilogram, 
1.3 kilos, 1.4, one and a half kilos. That'll do for now. I'm now gonna run the system and see if it needs any more. Nearly there, looking in the sight glass, I can see that there's a couple of bubbles. In fact, now they've cleared. The system's nicely charged. On the discharge, we've got 12 and a half bar, and on the suction, we've got six bar. It's evaporating at nine, 10 degrees C, and condensing at 29 degrees C. So, it's doing okay at the moment. The thing to do now is to have some patience and leave the system to run for 10, 15 minutes, let it settle down for a while and see how it goes. So, system's running nicely. Remember, when you require your FGAS training, contact Viva Training. Thank you very much for that, Robin, and thank you to Viva Training for allowing us to do these videos. If you've got any questions, please put some comments below. And if you want to learn more about your FGAS or if you want to go on an FGAS course, then bob on to the Viva Training website. You can find out more on there, find out prices, etc. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video.